Hello everyone and welcome to Friday PM. It's so great to be with you again and we want to welcome you if you're watching for the very first time. We want to say a big hello and we hope that you really enjoy this broadcast. For those of you who join us and our regular watchers, thank you for your support. We really appreciate it. Today we have a wonderful uh, episode. We have a wonderful friend with us. So Charlene and I will be having a, just a chat with our friend Jan Green. And she has a wonderful testimony, but not just a testimony. We, today we're going to be talking about forgiveness and her deep experience of forgiveness. And um, so we'd just like to go to Jan. And Jan, you had uh, just this week, you had just a very interesting experience that you'd like to share. <laughs> I really did. I, I went to my Facebook and was looking through the messages and I found spam at the bottom and I didn't know that you had spam in Messenger, you know, not that technical. And uh, so anyway, there was a name there and I thought, ah, oh, my word. And I've printed it off. Can I read please, you what I read? Please. This is dated uh, 28th of September 2015. Now that's six years ago and it had been sitting in there all the time. So if I read it to you, you'll understand. I'll change the names as they do with a little star. Uh, Dear Jan, I had a friend request from Tom so-and-so this morning, which really threw me after all these years and which I'm going to refuse. But it did bring home to me once again how much I regret what I now see as a betrayal of a really lovely woman by allowing him to come to live with me. There are only two things of which I am ashamed in my career, and being part of what happened then is one of them. My life was in an utter mess, but that's no excuse, and it's very far from how I would have acted now. I don't need you to reply or feel obliged to be nice about it, but I do want you to know that I hold sadness about the pain it caused you. I am sorry. That was so amazing. Um, in 1984, my husband left me after 18 years of marriage and we had uh, to go with this lady. Um, we had two lovely children. They were about 16 and 13 at the time, you know, such a time when they need their dad. And he left us. Very difficult, obviously, but you know, I have been in ministry for so long and ministering to other people that I realized that the one thing that I needed in my own life in order to get through this was forgiveness, to be able to forgive them. And you know, that was not an easy thing to do because forgiveness doesn't come easy to any of us, does it? No. Or naturally. No. Um, but I knew that Jesus commands you to forgive. Amen. And it says in the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. If I don't forgive, I'm not forgiven. And so we launched into a journey really and never spoke badly about him or her. And it was a conscious effort, but I used to drive past where she worked and say, Lord bless her in the name of Jesus. And I forgive her. And you know, that was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I would say that I, of course, we had difficult times, you know, we had the tears, we had the difficulty, but it took the sting out of it, that's it. Because really, if you don't forgive, then you're building up bitterness in yourself. And you know, so many of people are in this situation, whether it's a marriage partner who's gone off or something else that has happened, families break up, don't they? And they never speak to each other. Goodness, time is too short right now, don't you think? We've just been through a pandemic. You haven't been able to see loved ones for so long. Now, if you're still holding bitterness and anger against them, what hope is there? Right, yeah. You know, it just does not um, equate really with a happy life. So anyway, we, um, I continued to do that and my life went on and God was very good, really, really good. I was surrounded by good friends. Um, 
we were, uh, a group of us were pastoring a small church that was growing and people coming in from all over the place, being healed and restored. Uh, but we had to live through all that at this time. And I remember going for a walk around the field just down the road with my dog. And it was like the Lord flashed up a big screen, you know, like a, the screens you get in front of church or something like that. And this girl's face was on it. And he said to me, and what shall I do with this one? Oh, <laughs> you know, I said, Lord, but what can you say? Mm. I said, I chose to say, Lord, save this beautiful girl. Yeah. Now this letter, six years ago, had I known about it, I mean, I would have got in touch with her. I've sent her a card incidentally, and I've also messaged her, but I've not heard back. But I sent her a card because uh, they have a business, she and her husband, and it's got the, uh, on um, Google, it's got the address, so I've sent her a card and I hope she gets in touch because she's come to mind so many times over the years and I always say, Lord, bless her, and I'd like to be the one that leads her to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that'd be So awesome. this must be her time. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. I mean. But, you know, in the forgiveness is the healing. Yeah. And, yeah, that's the I like the that. Oh, Jan, say it again. In forgiveness... In the forgiveness is the healing. healing. Yeah. Is your healing. And oh, then I'm healed. In, yeah. in, uh, what I mean is when you were forgiving. Yes. That it, was, it was the a healing. process of healing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And you may never have received that letter. I mean, this letter is basically the, the icing or the cherry on the top. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's mm. not, you were not waiting for that. You had to let go of her, mm. not knowing whether you'd ever receive anything like this. So this is almost like, um, an, an answer to prayer in a way, wow, that somebody has come back because it doesn't always happen. Things no. happen to us and we're not always going to get an apology, are we? And, no. And so this is many years that you, you said 1984 this happened and yeah. it's 2015 and it's only now 2021 that you actually saw the message that was written. Yes. Yeah. Extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and so what, So in walking in forgiveness and, in, in, you know, like you've said, you've talked about what you had to do practically. You had to intentionally forgive, intentionally when you and let kind it come of out of felt your mouth. those yeah. things building <laughs> up and maybe you wanted to say something negative, you had to intentionally say something positive. How do you think that has impacted your life and the lives, the lives of your children? Because you had young teenagers as well and they are really obviously hurt as well. Yeah. How do you think, looking back, this has impacted your life and their lives? They had a difficult time because he, he didn't actually marry this girl. That only lasted probably 18 months, I think, and he moved on. But he married a lady who had children already and they sort of excluded ours, which was really tough. Uh, my son was just going off on to Bible college and really he got ministry there. He was fine. My daughter, of course, was only young yeah. and it destroyed her to a degree. Oh, God. Yeah. So uh, she really rebelled. But, you know, God's been faithful in all this because this particular gentleman, when the second marriage failed, he was 18 with me, he was 19 with her. And actually on his... 19th wedding, wedding anniversary, uh, she put divorce papers on the table. So he went out to Spain where she was and uh, she said, I don't know, Mum, but for the grace of God, I wouldn't want to know him because she'd, he's ignored me for 27 years, you know. But anyway, she, uh, she looked after him. And I think that was a healing process as well. She got a good relationship with him. But at the time, it caused great pain in both my kids. And I think children never escape. I mean, we're talking about um, marriage breakdown in particular at this point. But anyone who harbours uh, unforgiveness and bitterness in their life is going to affect the people around them. Mm. Mm. And how can you be happy and contented and live a positive life if, uh, well, with your children in particular, you've got to instill into them the good things that God has given us. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. 
That scripture you shared earlier in Matthew, that really touched oh, me. Ah, yes. Yes, it was Matthew 18, yeah. uh, where Jesus tells the parable of the servant who had borrowed vast sums of money from his uh, employer. Mm. And the employer called for his money. Well, that's the sort of thing people are doing these days, isn't it? You know, when life is hard for us all, you know, who owes me money? And he couldn't pay. And so the very benevolent uh, um, master forgave him everything. But he went out and he found someone that owed him tuppence. And he hands round his neck saying, come on, pay me all that you owe me. And the other servants saw it and they thought, well, he's been forgiven. Why doesn't he forgive? Yeah. And I think this is it. We are all forgiven so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our sin nailed Jesus to the tree. But it's because of what he has done for us that he, we have forgiveness for all our sin. And we now are required to pass on to others what God has done for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it seems to me through that scripture, it showed me something different. When you have unforgiveness, you are indebted to that person. That's true. It, 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 until you can forgive, it's like a payment forgiveness. You're paying off your debt. Until then, you are in debt. Yeah. Mm. And forgiveness is the payment yeah. to release you of that debt that is just consuming you. And if you feel there's somebody in your life that you cannot forgive, you know, there is a law of unforgiveness that we've learned from John, isn't it, Rach? What you cannot forgive, you will yourself become. I know many times some people will say, I've looked in the mirror and, oh my goodness, I see my mother. Yeah. And I, I haven't been able to forgive her for years of what she did to me or my father or whoever. I knew, I know you had to forgive whoever abused you. It's such a strong indebtedness. Is that a word you can use when you're indebted to yes. somebody, uh, in debt? Mm. It's like a heaviness over you. You know you can only be free if you pay that debt off. Yes. And unforgiveness is, is something that will hold on to you until you speak it. And I want to ask you, when every time you drove past their home or her home and you said, I forgive with your mouth, I forgive, did you feel that forgiveness or did you just decide, I don't care how I feel, I'm just going to say it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, because I didn't really feel it in the beginning. Um, but you have to choose to forgive. Mm. And the more that you do say it and you say it and you say it, you know, the Lord works it in your heart. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. This is the thing. You can't sort of say, oh, I forgive, you know. It's got to be the Holy Spirit that works yeah. in you. But the interesting thing is that when people come for ministry, you know, for healing, be, be whatever, they cannot receive if they're holding unforgiveness and bitterness in their hearts. And you have to so often lead them to see that and to help them to forgive. Even if in the same way it starts off, I forgive them, I choose to forgive yeah. them. Yeah. And it's not just saying I forgive them, you know, and I'll forget it. Right. Yeah. Because you don't forget actually. You don't. Yeah. There's very little that we do forget. Yeah. But we can forgive. Wow. Yeah. And that actually, you know, it's not a plaster on it. It's not like sticking a plaster on. It gets rid of it. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's in that forgiveness that we allow ourselves to be healed. Yes. Um, like you said, it still does leave scars. Mm. It doesn't mean that because I've forgiven, everything becomes perfect and life becomes perfect, but I'm able now to deal with life because I'm not holding on to, this is what happened to me and this is what now defines me. Because I think that ah, that's yes. the, the thing about unforgiveness is the thing that we don't forgive starts to then define who we are and how we live. And, you know, if an incident defines who we are and how we live and how we interact with other people, we've given so much power over to this particular incident or a person. Mm. You know, we've basically given our lives over mm. to that particular thing. Yes. And we can never live some, a life that is really free and really full because we're tethered, we're tied. Mm. Like, we're tied to this thing and we can't 
Yeah. We, we can't get, we can't no, break loose. No, lose ourselves. We can't that's so true. Loose. It's a victim mentality, wow. isn't it? Yeah. And that's and, what we yeah. need to break free of. Yeah. I'm just thinking while you're talking, Rach, is that that spirit of self-pity comes on you as well. Yeah. Yes. Where you feel nobody's gone through what I've been through. Yeah. And John always had an amazing teaching where he said it's a little, like a little quilt that you bring out at times and you, you so consumed with your self-pity that you sew on another piece of that quilt and, and you, you rub that, you stroke, you stroke it and, and you just think about your problem and it consumes you. All you talk about is your problem and your, your situation and, and then you put it back in the little box but then when you feel all sorry for yourself you bring it out again mm -hmm. and you stroke it again and, and you, it keeps you warm and it's a, a warm blanket of self-pity. It's time to break free because the Holy Spirit wants to take you to another level. Yep, he wants amen. to take you to um, greater places that you can never imagine and if you are held back by self-pity, unforgiveness, Oh, I, I encourage you tonight, break free from it and say with your mouth, it's not a feeling, it's a decision, like you said, it's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. I forgive you, say the name, I forgive you, Satan, you have no more hold on me, I'm not indebted to that person anymore, I release myself from this debt of unforgiveness and I'm free. My bank account of forgiveness and unforgiveness is empty and it's, it's not in the red anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's and right. I, I'm so encouraged because you were married to this man for 19 years. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and your children now, Jan, your son is the leader of a church yes. here yeah. in Congleton. Yeah. yeah. And, and your daughter. Yeah. yeah. And uh, your daughter is doing well. She's doing well. She loves the Lord. I would say that, uh, I would just say that she was actually with her father when he died. Mm. Wow. So that um, is another thing that's been difficult for her. Okay. But in that time, she's been able to minister to him and God's given her great grace. Mm. So that's lovely. But um, yes, yeah, she's doing well. She loves the Lord. Yeah. 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 Through your... Um, just your obedience to push further than your pain mm. and to say, for the sake of me, but for the sake of my children, I choose forgiveness. Yes, that's right. that's right. And here you are. And I was amazed because we spoke to Jan and Jan said, you won't believe it. Just this week I found this letter that's been laying there in Facebook. And I said, Jan, we need to interview you for it's Friday. It's arrived on Yom Kippur and I thought, yeah. wow, <laughs> yeah. I love it, I love it. Yeah. God is yeah. so good. So, you know, I'm just hoping she'll reply. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so very interesting. Um, amazing. And through this, the Lord can work in her life and it's a ripple effect isn't it, in the end? Oh, yes. And no matter how long it takes, the Lord is not worried about how long things take. I think it is all about your character being formed. Yes. That's right. Yeah, yes, that's absolutely. What, yeah, that's what I want to ask. I mean, how would you say that obviously this is a big thing to overcome, but, you know, in life there are always other obstacles. How would you say this has, this has helped you going forward? Because obviously you can't, you can't stay in that place. You forgive. No. Um, but you also have to live um, because just move the Bible on with the says, rest, yeah. you know, that you're supposed to have life in abundance mm. and not just life in abundance when everything's going great, but in the midst of the things that are terrible and are meant to crush you and hold you down. Yes. So how would you say that you have been able to really just take that on? I've forgiven and now I'm moving forward. I'm not staying in, in the pain and the suffering, but I'm actually moving forward with my life and I want that abundance of life. How would you say? Ah, That's yes. a big question. <laughs> it is a big question. <laughs> I think I'm actually very blessed because I've known the Lord for a very long time. I come from a Christian family. My father was a Baptist pastor, uh, minister of the church for years. Um, so we had that grounding and we knew, knew the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that must be a help, surely, to, be, to begin. Mm -hmm. um, but also God has given me a character. Uh, 
I always say I bob along the water like a cork. Yes. You know, because things come against you. Yeah. But the Lord is my, well, he's my rock and my fortress and my strong tower. And I just turn to him. Um, and really, during the time of being on my own, I got such a depth with the Lord. And that's always continued. But it was a very special time and the Lord would speak to me and I'd write it down, you know, and I have a journal of beautiful promises. But it's really taking in, Lord, you know, I'm totally dependent on you is the thing. So whatever comes to us, and we have challenges now, don't we? Very yes. severe challenges and in the, into the future. All we can say is, Lord, I'm yours. Yes. My times are in your hands. And we just have to seek what he wants for us right now. And <laughs> I, I always say, I live in the now. Yeah. Because the past is the past. You can't change that. Mm -hmm. The future is uncertain, so you can only trust God. But yeah. now, today... Mm. You know, if something happens, I can forgive. I choose to forgive. Yes. You know, whatever it is, but always go to the Lord. Yeah. 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 Father, what do I do in this situation? Yes. And he will speak. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. He, he is so strong about forgiveness in the word. I was um, going through some scriptures of forgiveness and there are many scriptures of forgiveness because that's his ultimate, what he did was came down mm. to forgive us. Yes. And we are made in his image. Yes. It can be something that we can do because we, uh, it's inherently in us because Christ is in us. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And then we can have that hope of glory to move on and have a letter like this come yes. asking you for your forgiveness. Tables have turned. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. All these years later and you've stood your ground. And yeah. I don't know what you think, Rachel, but I, I, you know, you've always ministered to people with un unforgiveness. You prayed for healing for them. You were in ministry. You were in the church. And here it hit you and you needed to minister to yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to bring healing. And... Um, I know there are people watching that need to pray that prayer yeah. and to be touched by the Holy Spirit mm. because we cannot do it on our own. We can't. Mm. No. Will you pray for us, for somebody? Or is there something else you wanted to say, Rochi? No, I think, we've, I think we've covered it. But I think, well, the one thing that I would say I think is very important just make the decision to forgive, mm. even if you don't feel like it, even That's if right. the anger is building up inside of you, even if you think it's not fair. The very fact that it's mentioned in the Lord's Prayer when the disciples said to Jesus, mm. how, you know, you pray all the time, you're always speaking to the Father, how should we go about doing it? And that forgiveness is mentioned in that prayer mm. means that uh, it's pretty important, means that we're actually in life always going to face situations where we may be betrayed, right. where um, things are not going to go our way, where we have to forgive because it's part of life. We get disappointed, people let us down. And so there's, there were always opportunities to forgive. And that's for me what astounds me when I'm just thinking about it, about the Lord's Prayer. He mentioned it because it is so important for us to live fruitful Mm. lives for us oh, to absolutely. actually live lives of purpose and and not live lives of you know where we kind of chained to self-pity chained to just all everything that's gone wrong in our lives that's the sum of who we are that's not the truth we be, we were um, born and we were made and created yeah. for a destiny and a purpose yeah. and anything that the enemy can do to cut that off through disappointments, through people, through situations, he will try and do it and that's yeah. his plan. And so when we forgive, we are saying to the enemy, I reject your plan yeah. for my life yeah. and Father, I receive your plan for my life. Amen. I receive it and I take it because I know that my life is better than this. It that's is worth right. more yes. than this. Yeah. So I think that's all I wanted to say oh, well, as yes. a kind of, yes. you know, closing remark. Yes, yes. Jan, Lovely. Will you? Yes, I will. one other scripture comes to mind. Please do. And that is, uh, as Paul said, forgetting those things that were, are behind, I press forward to the prize of the high calling. Yeah? yeah. 
And that's what we want. We want to be in God's time. We don't know how difficult times are going to get in the future. We've faced a lot in the last couple of years. But I think more difficult things are coming. And if we don't ground ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to be able to stand. And if we're carrying baggage, we're not going to be able to do what he wants us to do. The world is going to need us so much. You know, when the darkness is getting darker, don't you think the light of Jesus shines brighter? And we have got to be that light. Jesus said, we're a lamp set on a hill. And we've got to be that light in these days. And so let's start with ourselves and say, well, have I got unforgiveness and bitterness, which is what we're talking about today, because it is so foundational and key. And we need to have that cleansing within ourselves. Amen. And so let's just pray. Father, we just thank you that Holy Spirit helps us to understand what it is in our lives. And Lord, for each one watching today, it may well be that somebody has come to mind or some incident in life that still causes pain many, many years later. And now is the time to deal with that and to bring it out and say, Lord, I want to forgive this person. I want to lay aside the bitterness because that is against you. And it's only harming me. It's not harming the person that I'm angry with. So Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that I will be able to forgive and that you will give me that spirit of forgiveness upon me. And I'm going to make a choice today and I say I release these people in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I forgive them for all that's gone on in the past. Lord, cleanse me from bitterness and unforgiveness. Cleanse me from harboring in my thoughts all these things that happened so long ago or even recently. But Lord, I choose to forgive. And I pray that you'll bless that person. And if they're not on this earth anymore, then Lord, just receive the fact that I forgive them. And I, I take your cleansing and I'm cut free from that unforgiveness, cut free from the bitterness. And Lord, forgetting those things that are behind, I'm going to press forward to what you have in the future. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And then, Dan, while you were praying, I also just felt in my heart to share that there's a lot of disunity in the church these days because of clashes and people who have unforgiveness and the enemy is loving every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And in these last days, the Lord wants to come for a victorious bride. Yes. People who have left church because they've been hurt by either the leadership or whatever it is. And we want to encourage you today to let go of unforgiveness when you have been hurt in the church by Christian brothers and sisters, by Christian leaders. The growth is on your part and not on their part. The Lord will deal with them. So that's just something in my heart that I mm. want to also share yes. as you prayed. Thank you for coming on yeah. and oh, thank you for having blessing me. us with your testimony. I'm challenged yeah. and I want to make sure that I'm vigilant, that the enemy doesn't come and steal from my joy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The joy is the key. Yeah. Amen. And, you know, if times come against us, worship. Hallelujah. Yes. Put on your praise tapes. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. so important. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, and we, we aim for... My husband and I, and God's given me a wonderful husband. Been married now for 31 years, so God is Amazing, so good. Jen. But we aim for, we say, four minute forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I forgive you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Four yeah. minute forgiveness. Yeah. And <laughs> I love that. Brush it off. Brush it yeah. off. Water off a duck's back. You have to. Yes. Otherwise, it will consume you. That's right. Yeah. Great. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Thank Lovely you. to have you with thank us, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jan, uh, for sharing. I think what you've shared is you've shared very practical 
means with which people can move forward in mm -hmm. forgiveness. That we said that forgiveness is not a feeling. You may never feel like forgiving somebody, but the, by making the decision to forgive, you um, unburden yourself and you detach yourself from this great weight that can weigh your life down, but you're actually, it's allowing you to move forward. And we hope that this um, episode on forgiveness, if it's something that you're struggling with or something that you're dealing with yourself, that it has given you some hope as well. If you've been mired in unforgiveness, that there is still hope, there is a way out. You don't have to be weighed down by the bitterness that God is there for you and he says, I have forgiven you. Amen. I have forgiven you and I release you. If, and as you release that person, you'll start to see things change. And it might take some time, but that's okay because God is patient and he's willing and he really wants you to have the best life. Amen. I think we should end with another touch. Yes. What do you think, Rach? Yes. So as we go out tonight, we'll start with another touch. Yes. Uh, which is some wonderful words. Yes. Isn't it great? Yeah. Okay, good. So God bless you until next time here on Friday PM because it's, it's the, the place, place to be. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, another.